Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, we live in a world of technology, and as farmers, it's never been a better time. You think of all the things you can do with your equipment and also with your smartphone. We're going to talk about some phone apps and iPad apps and these kind of things that can really benefit you this fall on your farm and going into next spring. We'll also discuss how to pick the right corn hybrid. This is a very challenging thing. There are all these companies out there and all these different products. How do you know going into next year how to maximize your profitability? We'll talk about that on the show today. I'll tell you how to maximize profits. It's controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you the secrets to stopping this tough weed later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about is it safe to apply fertilizer in the fall? We do get this question from non-farmers. Uh, you know, the media in general, I think, just believes that fertilizer is something bad. Well, all fertilizer is, is plant food. You know, we really get a lot of questions about, all right, you aren't gonna plant a crop out there till next spring. Why are you doing so much work out in the field? Why are you doing tillage? Why are you putting on fertilizer? And I think a lot of people don't really understand how much work there is in farming. When you look at just getting the seed bed prepped, getting all the nutrients in place, I mean, those are big time consuming jobs. And if we get harvest done in the fall before there's snow and before the ground freezes up, farmers really have an opportunity to get some of those jobs done so in the spring if weather conditions go against us like they did in 2014 where winter held on all the way until it seemed like mid-may at least in the upper midwest well wow there was just no time for farmers to do all those jobs and plant so if there's time to do it farmers are going to want to do it in the fall now the question is can it be done safely and environmentally conscious okay every fertilizer product is a little bit different there are products that leach in other words ones that move down through the soil profile file with lots of rain, especially in lighter soils. Like on the ground we're standing on, it's a very heavy soil, so to think that products like nitrate, sulfate, and boron are going to leach real easily through this soil? No way, it's not going to happen. But in a lot of soils, lighter soils, sandier soils in other words, then it's very easy for those fertilizer products to move down in the soil with rain. Okay, so right away you say, oh no, a farmer better not put nitrogen, sulfur, or boron out in the fall. Well, that's true that he probably has to be careful, but the farmer can put some nitrogen, sulfur, and boron out there. So what a farmer will look at is how much in total can his soil hold? What farmers do is they test their soil for something called cation exchange capacity. And the farmer can simply take his cation exchange capacity number times 10. That'll tell him roughly how much nitrogen his soil can hold at any one time. As long as he doesn't overdo that, usually he's relatively safe. Then you look at the form of fertilizer. Farmers are actually putting out in their field. In some cases, like with phosphate, for example, it's in the form of a rock and it's going to take some time for that fertilizer to break down and become available for the plant to take up as food next year. So by putting out some of the forms of fertilizer, especially the dry fertilizer in the fall, farmers have some time to get rainfall or snow on the field and then as that melts and moves through the soil profile it can help break that fertilizer down so it's available for the crop next year. Yeah but the thing is when you look at products like phosphorus, potassium, and zinc, they really don't move in soil. So as long as the farmer places them into the soil a little bit, they're not going anywhere. They're going to be there for years and years until they get removed by plants. Now, certainly if a farmer was to lay fertilizer on top of the ground that doesn't move down in the soil, then he's at a little bit more risk. So we just encourage farmers who do apply fertilizer in the fall, products like phosphorus, potassium, and zinc that don't move in the soil, to physically place them down into the soil themselves, and then those products are much safer. Okay, we talked about some fertilizer that could potentially move, like nitrogen fertilizer. If it gets converted over into the nitrate form, it could potentially leach. So another practice that farmers have really readily adopted over the last decade or so is using nitrogen stabilizers with their nitrogen. What the nitrogen stabilizers do is basically hold that nitrogen in the form called ammonium, which has a positive charge. By keeping the nitrogen in that positively charged state, it can chemically and physically bind to our soil 
soil, so it's not going to go anywhere. Soil actually has a negative charge, and positively charged ammonium will lock up to it just like a magnet. Now, if you get into that nitrate form, which is a negative charge, a negative and a negative are going to repel, and that's where we could actually lose some nitrogen. So nitrogen stabilizers really help farmers hold that nitrogen in the right form so it stays in their soil where they want it. The real big keys here too for farmers are number one to apply their fertilizer late in the fall so then the ground is either just about froze or going to be here in the next couple three weeks so then the farmer doesn't have to worry that anything's going to move through that moisture that does come after that point is usually going to be in the form of snow at least in our part of the country so not a real big concern for us and the other real key here is to just do it on fields that they know are relatively safe from flooding. So like the ground we're standing on, for example, occasionally will flood out. I don't want to put fertilizer out here. People just, especially in the media, they say, oh, these farmers are polluting the earth and everything else. Um, farmers don't have the money to pollute the earth. They barely have enough money to put the crop out there. The last thing they want to do is put fertilizer out and have that go to waste. So a farmer is not dumb enough to put stuff where it's going to flood out on a regular basis. Farmers are very careful about where they are applying that fertilizer in the fall. And then the other key is just making sure that they know what crop they're going to plant and when they're going to plant in the spring. If it's on fields where they're going to plant relatively early in the spring, they can use that fertilizer up before they have a whole lot of risk for loss. Well, farmers certainly have a lot of motivation to get work done in the fall if they can, getting that seed bed ready and getting plant food out there so it's ready to go for their crops next spring. Farmers have adopted a number of different methods to make sure they're environmentally friendly with what they're doing, using stabilizers with the fertilizer to protect it from leaching and loss, and also putting that fertilizer down underneath the soil where it's safe from any potential erosion or, or spring washing off the field too. Well, another real important thing if a farmer wants to be successful in his operation is controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in wheat control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans will provide tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate and will be built on the Genuity Roundup Ready to Yield trade. See them in action at extendfollowafield.com. No one understands your farm, your field, and your soil like you. I'm Myron Stein, and at Stein Seed Company, we know your field demands a choice. That's why Stein's corn breeding program combines our industry-leading genetics and superior standability with the most sought-after traits, giving you the best choices for maximum yield. Learn more about Stein's hybrid lineup by visiting steinseed.com or contacting your local Stein Seed dealer. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your Quickroots today. Wake up, breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. A veil makes more pee available to your roots here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a veil. No one understands your farm your field, and your soil like you. I'm Myron Stein, and at Stein Seed Company, we know your field demands a choice. That's why Stein's corn breeding program combines our industry-leading genetics and superior standability with the most sought-after traits, giving you the best choices for maximum yield. Learn more about Stein's hybrid lineup by visiting steinseed.com or contacting your local Stein Seed dealer. proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. One of the most important things a farmer can do every year is pick the right seed. So today we're going to talk a little bit about 
the steps you might consider taking on your farm to pick the right corn hybrid. Okay, I'll admit it, my mind's wandering just a little bit. We're standing here in the soybean stubble and I'm already thinking, okay, what problems do we have? What soils have we got here? What's the fertility like? And what corn hybrid can we put out here in our rotation for next year? And you think about that, the biggest things that I think about with corn hybrids, and I'm sure Brian will agree with this point at least with me, is we've got to look at the defensive traits that we absolutely have to have. For example, Goss's wilt is in our area. That's one of the big considerations for us. If we're going into a field that has any kind of history with Goss's wilt, or if we're into a continuous corn rotation where we've got a higher risk of having some of those diseases like Goss's wilt, we've got to pick the right hybrid so we've got good Goss's wilt tolerance going into next year because there's really no post-emerge treatment that we can do to protect our corn or no seed treatment we can put on, nothing. We've got to have the right hybrid, that's our best defense. The next thing that we suggest you do is test your soils. When you find out where you're at in terms of fertility levels, soil pH, for that matter, even soil type, those are good things to talk to your seed provider about and say, hey, I've got this field or this area of a field and I have this issue going on out there. Now, we aren't to the point on most farms where we can change varieties on the go. We've done a little bit of that on our own farm and I think that that's where the future is, where we can literally change varieties as we cross the field. So if I've got some sand in an area, I might put a drought tolerant hybrid there. If I've got some really heavy ground, I'm gonna change the variety. Maybe I'm going with a racehorse there or something that has good defensive traits if I have poor drainage. The point is you've got to really understand your soil and you're not going to be able to do that fully without having a good soil test and then making sure that you communicate that information to your seed provider. You know we had a really cool spring in 2014 to put it lightly and we saw great differences in emergence in certain hybrids. I think when we get into reduced tillage or we yep. get into a situation where we've got heavy residue out there with continuous corn something like that we've got to have a great emerger and then when you think about your plan if you say you know I really want want to plant in the upper Midwest. Let's just say that it's April 15th and that's kind of on the early side and May 1st is typically when everybody else plants around you. So you're a couple weeks ahead of the game. You want to make sure you're picking good emerging hybrids to put out there first. If it's a full season hybrid and it's really slow getting out of the ground, it's probably not for you. Now in some cases you may be forced, at least temporarily, to pick a hybrid based on certain field conditions. So I mentioned poor drainage already, but that can be fixed if you get some tile out there or maybe do some other practices. How about compaction? A lot of people talk about, well, I need big roots. Well, you know what? You get big roots if you have good fertility and you reduce compaction in your soil. So maybe that's a field problem rather than, hey, I have to have the right hybrid in the long term. The other big thing that we talk to people all the time about is lodging. Oh, I've had lodging problems. I gotta have something that stands really good. Well, you know what you do to make something stand really good? You reduce the compaction, you fix the drainage issue, and you have ample fertilizer, especially potassium. If you load your ground up with potassium and get that base saturation K number above 4%, lodging issues usually go away. That's what we found on our farm, and we've worked with hundreds of farmers all over the area that have found the same thing. Get your potassium levels up. So I'm just trying to say, yeah, in the short term, and especially rented ground, you might not be able to fix the soil. So you might have to pick a hybrid based on some of those problems, but if you own the ground, hey, long term, let's fix that soil, get that thing right. Now you're not not limited to picking certain defensive traits, you can go for more racehorse hybrids. One of the biggest things that's happened here in agriculture over the last few months has been commodity prices have come down. So a lot of people are saying, oh boy, I gotta make cuts and I don't wanna spend $300 a bag on seed corn. And in some cases, I can agree with that. But let's take a look at this thing. I mean, to start with, I've had some people say, you know what, maybe I'll just plant corn right out of the bin. Okay, so yeah, you save $300. Yeah, yeah if you want what's a disaster. That amount to, well, hey, what's that amount to on a per acre basis? Though. Let's say that you're spending $120 on a per acre basis. Well, if corn is $3, that's 40 bushels. So are you really going to gain 40 bushels more by planting new seed as opposed to something out of the bin? I'd be shocked if you didn't gain a lot more yeah. than that. Keep in mind, we're comparing hybrid corn to non-hybrid corn. There's a big difference there. Okay, so most people aren't going to go to that extreme. But a lot of people are saying, well, maybe I'll cut some of the traits. Maybe I'm going to cut the corn bore or the rootworm or something else. Well, keep in mind that insecticides cost money and you have to make trips across the field and like with rootworms if you have heavy pressure maybe the trait isn't enough okay but 
chances are the insecticide isn't going to do it 100% either. We've never said a soil applied insecticide is going to get 100% of rootworms. Maybe 90, 95%, that's about as much as you can expect, and in some cases only 80%. So when we're talking 99% control with that rootworm trait, at least with non-resistant rootworms, that's pretty darn good. Even with resistant rootworms, there are a few out there. You can kill the rest with maybe a lower rate of insecticide or something like that. But all I'm trying to say here is we really want you to analyze things before you just jump ahead and say, hey, I'm gonna just make all kinds of cuts. I'm going with just straight Roundup, or maybe I'm going straight conventional corn so I can save 50 or $100 a bag. Run the numbers, figure out what that amounts to per acre and what you could potentially lose. And in a lot of cases, you're gonna find that, you know what, I'm probably gonna stick with the trait, especially if I get a little bit of a deal on it and it's slightly cheaper this year than it was a year ago. Well, picking the right corn hybrid for your farm is certainly critical to your profitability in 2015. And no matter what, you can't sacrifice weed control in those corn fields either. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. It's a humble idea. Use a biological process to turn a plant into a power source. From that idea came the first Poet Refinery. One biorefinery in one town turned into 27 facilities in 27 towns, creating new local jobs, producing hundreds of millions of gallons of ethanol, and providing renewable products around the world. Suddenly, that one little idea seems a whole lot bigger. See the world differently with Poet. There's no clock on this job, just the timeless hands of intuition and effort ticking from within. An endless cadence of committed work, from the passing of Mother Nature's final frost to the hanging dew at harvest. Around here, wheels are always turning, and watches need no winding, because success never rests. Hi, my name is Kalina Gillespie, and I am the Senior Customer Service Manager for Agriculture Liquid Fertilizers. But I am also the mother of a United States Marine Corps Reservist, and that is one of the reasons I wanted to find a way to help our military men and women. Agriculture Liquid Fertilizers has decided to join forces with me and Operation Homefront in giving back to these military men and women. They will donate a penny per gallon delivered in the month of November and a penny per gallon ordered in the month of November. This year's projected U.S. soybean yield will lose over half a billion dollars per point in shrink. Eliminate shrink in your bin. Store grain without lowering moisture content with the AgriDrive Bullseye Temperature and Moisture Controller. The Bullseye monitors air temperature and relative humidity, allowing your fans to utilize the weather's natural condition to maintain your grain at market moisture. Fan run times drastically decrease along with the cost of over drying. Eliminate shrink today. Call now. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. Here at Ag PhD over the last few years, we've developed a number of apps that are free for you that you can download onto your smartphone or your iPad. And I actually had to pull my notes out because we have eight different apps now that are out there and hopefully you're using these. But if you aren't, I guess I just wanted to make you familiar with the apps that we have developed. So we've got the Soil Test app, the Ag PhD Soil Test app. You can do your own soil testing on your farm. We use this on our own farm. It's really slick and also it helps get you a good rate on soil testing, gives you some good advice on things. And and you can get Darren and my recommendations in addition to Midwest Labs recommendations for your soil. Well, it certainly generated a lot of conversation that way when you've got a couple of different recommendations. This is something that we see for a lot of farmers as a big benefit. Not only do you get a great recommendation from Midwest Labs, they're well respected around the world, but also Brian and I put our twist to it too and say, hey, if it was our farm, here's what we'd be doing. Now you've got a couple of different things there. Plus you can talk to your crop consultant or your local agronomist and say, hey, I got a couple different opinions here. Now what's your opinion? 
and then you can start comparing things and it really helps to learn and improve your profitability going forward. Our most popular app to date with the most downloads is our fertilizer removal app. This is where you should start if you're trying to develop your own fertility program. You've got to know what your crop removes in terms of nutrients. We have the IPHD field guide app where you can get our recommendations for a whole host of different weeds and insects in terms of how to get control. We have the GDU app. We have a nutrient deficiency app, a drainage calculator, harvest loss, and planting population apps. We have a number of different things that can help you. Just search for Ag PhD on any app store for the particular device that you're using. I think the big thing is you've got to have data to make good decisions. And you can say, well, I'm just going to judge based on you know, some subjective thing out of my field. That looked green or it looked yellow, so I'm going to change this or that. Why not have the numbers? We've got all these tools available. And like Brian said, these tools that we're talking about right now are absolutely free to you. So why not download them and use them on your farm? And you can start making decisions. Like for example, the Harvest Loss app. You could go out into this field right now, look for how many soybeans are laying on the ground and see exactly how much how many soybeans didn't make it into your combine. Now I realize this is after the fact and you're like, oh man, now I feel terrible because I lost this much money in the field. Hey, go through that combine this fall and this winter, get things set right, look for problems. If you're dropping too much on the ground, maybe there's an issue or maybe there's an issue with the variety that you chose. If you had a lot of shatter out in the field, now you can see exactly how bad that was and you decide, wow, I have to be very cautious about using that variety again or I need to make a change on my farm to improve my profitability. Well, once again, we do have a number of free ag PhD apps. We encourage you to download those. These are things we use on our own farm just about every day too. The smartphone can be a powerful tool, especially when you have apps like these. Another thing that can be powerful for your farm is stopping our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is Lady's Thumb. There are several different types of smart weed out there, whether it's Pennsylvania smart weed or swamp smart weed or Lady's Thumb, as we're talking about today. The way you can tell these apart, swamp smart weed, for example, is a perennial weed, and that's going to have some hairy leaves, and it's also going to have rhizomes that run beneath the ground. When you look at Pennsylvania smart weed, it's an annual weed, so it's just going to have your normal fibrous root system. So if you pull it up, that's what you'll see. Plus, it's got waxy, shiny green leaves. Then when you look at Lady's Thumb, that's an annual annual weed as well, but it has kind of a purplish color print on each leaf that looks about like a thumbprint. That's how it got the name Lady's Thumb. Okay, with Lady's Thumb, it's really not that difficult to control. We do have a number of good options in various crops. Let's start in wheat. I would suggest Sharpen Down. Now you can use Prepare that has a little bit of activity, but Sharpen is better. Post Emerge, I like Husky. If you throw a little addition broad spec in with either Husky or Wide Match, that'll really help out as well. In corn, I'd probably go with Verdict, but Sure Start and Triple Flex are really good too. Post Emerge, I like Status the best. Throw a little atrazine with it to kick the control up a little more, but Callisto, Loudest Impact, Armazon work okay too. In soybeans, here's where it does get a little tricky. I'd use Authority MTZ or Authority First, but Post Emerge, I want to save the pursuit for post. So in other words, I'm saying don't use Authority Assist. I really like Authority MTZ best pre, then follow with some pursuit post because Roundup is okay on this weed. It's just not fantastic. Well, the other thing is that pursuit and Raptor are not too bad post, but adding some Flexstar or Cobra with it adds a little extra kick, especially if the lady thumb gets more than about three or four inches tall. That's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. We've been strip tilling for a number of years and work with a large number of other strip tillers across the country. I'll share a piece of advice that's held true for nearly all in today's Iron Talk. 
If you're trying to get strip tilling done yet this fall, the weather and soil conditions are variable and you're likely running out of time quickly depending on where you're at in the country. The rule of thumb for today's Iron Talk is to make your strip till pass the last trip across the field in the fall. Here are the big issues that have been coming up. Tough stalks. Following corn, dealing with big, long stalks that are often holding moisture is a real challenge for strip till. If you need to do some other form of tillage to help with the stalks, like vertical tillage with a coulter cart, for example, you should do that first. We ran into this challenge last year, and running another pass after strip till was detrimental to the seed beds that we had built for next year. Nutrient application. If you have nutrients or soil amendments that need to be applied, but you're ready to strip till a field, the best choice is to wait until after the nutrients are applied to do the strip tillage. We had this situation come up where we needed to broadcast apply zinc sulfate on a prescription basis to certain zones within a field. We ended up doing the strip tilling work first because snow and cold weather were imminent. Rather than messing up our berms, we waited until spring and found weather where the ground was firm enough in the morning for us to get across with the broadcast spreader, but it was thawing in the afternoon and we got our work done. Now it's definitely best to let strip tilt be the last pass you make through the field in the fall, but things aren't always ideal, even or especially on our farm. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. My data is mine, not mine. Mine to share, mine to keep. It's mine when I want it. Mine where I want it. And only mine. My data is mine to analyze. Mine to put to work. Mine to control. It's mine. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect only from Case IH. I've been involved in developing new technologies in agriculture for over three decades. The changing times demanded that we develop new and better equipment. Dry powder applications on seed can only be highly successful if they can be easily, effectively, and accurately applied to the target. That's where our company, Changing Times, and CT applicators come into the picture. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, soybean inoculants, or other dry products. Remember, CT Applicators for the changing times. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. We know that the future is liquid. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizer's constant research and development creates next generation products that seem like science fiction. But the fact is, the yields, the sustainability, the food and fiber that our customers produce season after season is not a dream, but a reality. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers, helping you grow the future. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. Well, that's our time for today, but if you're looking for more agronomic information, we invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find that on Sirius XM Channel 80, the rural radio channel, at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD television program, or we've got another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. 
plants actually tell farmers what nutrients they need. They don't do it verbally, but farmers get the information through plant tissue analysis. It's another way farmers practice responsible nutrient management. To learn more, visit rnmf.org.